Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to give the answers of the previous shots that we talked about. But before starting the video, if you find my videos helpful or if any of the question or explanation of concept has ever helped you out, please do subscribe to the channel. So let's get started with this video. So the first question was, how can we pass data from flows to Apex? So let's consider this situation that you have a screen flow and if you have to pass the data from the screen flow to your Apex class, how do we do it? So first of all, you need to create an Apex class with the invocable method. So first step is create class with this is how it would look like. And the most important at the rate invo cable annotation with the label. Right, so this is how you will create your first invocable method or in uh, method with in uh, class with invocable method. And once that is done, you go to your flow, go to the flow, and then pull apex action or actions let's say and inside apex action search with this label my first invocable class as soon as you will find it out you'll automatically find this class and this particular method and this is how you can create a variable inside the flow which has output a checkbox checked and this is how you can pass the data from your flow to the apex method so first thing first you create an invocable method then once that is done you go to the flow pull the actions the apex actions basically and you create a output variable inside the flow and then you can pass this output variable to the apex class by searching with this method by searching with this my first invocable apex or it can be anything the label <coughs> next question is what kind of parameters can future method take okay First thing we have to understand is it can take list of string, list of boolean, uh, list of uh, integer or anything like that. But what it cannot take as a parameter is list of s objects. Future method cannot take list of s objects as a parameter. It cannot take list of s objects as a parameter. Next thing is it does not have return type. Right. Second thing is it does not have written type. So to answer this question, the future method can uh, can take any uh, parameter except list of s objects. Okay, it can take list of string, list of boolean, or anything like that. But it cannot take list of s objects as a parameter. Next is what is the practical use of at the rate API decorator? <coughs> so first of all, let's understand what is the use of the at the rate API decorator. At the, at the rate API decorator is used to pass the data from the parent to the child, right? In LWC component, if you have two component, the parent component and the child component, if you have to pass data from the parent component to the child component, so you can pass it using the at the rate API decorator in which what you can do is inside the child component, you will create a variable <coughs> or a method with at the rate API decorator. Now once that is done, it is exposable or any value can be passed to this variable from the child to parent from the parent to the child right so that's how you do it now the most practical use of at the rate api decorator is uh, let's say you have an edit button let's say on account there is an edit button right standard edit button with the help of which you can edit the account now what you want to do is you want to override, override this edit button with an uh, lightning web component let's say you have to do it now we cannot override lwc component directly we cannot do that directly okay you cannot directly uh, create an LWC component and can override the LWC component with the edit button. So instead other way around is you first create an aura component and inside this aura component you call the LWC component. Right. So now as you are overriding with edit button, 
right? So you need the record ID as well. You need to pass the record ID to the LWC component, right? But we cannot pass it directly as we are uh, doing via wire, right? We are first creating an aura component and from aura component, we are calling the LWC component. So we directly cannot pass the record ID. So in that cases, what you need to do is you need to create a at the rate API uh, record ID variable in your LWC component. And then you have to, when let's say this is my, my LWC component. Okay, this is the name of my LWC component, which has at the rate API record ID. And there is my Aura component, let's say Aura. Right, this is Aura. And in this Aura, I'm going to call my LWC component with this, my hyphen LWC hyphen comp. Right, this is how I'm going to pass. But now this record ID is available to me. Okay, I can pass the values to it. So I will just take this record ID from here and then I can pass anything that I want inside it. P dot record ID. Usually what that's what we do. So this is how you can pass. This is a practical use where you have to override the edit button first with aura component and then from the aura from the uh, using the aura component, you can pass the record ID from the aura component to the LWC component, but the LWC component variable must have at the rate API uh, as its uh, annotation or decorator. Next question is what is the data type of stack what that wire method returns? So wire method returns two types of parameter. One is error and one is stack. If you if you have ever went through the catch method, there is a try and catch within it, right? Inside the wire method. So inside the catch method, there is a error and stack. So error will return, there is an error and there is another stack, right? The error will return list of, or let's say it returns only S objects. On the other hand, stack returns string. So those were the four questions that I had to cover. If you found this video helpful, please do subscribe to this channel.